After months of waiting patiently, the creators of EmuDeck made famously for the Steam Deck, the all-in-one emulation application is finally free and available for Windows PC like the Legion Go and RG Ally. So today I'm going to show you how to get it installed, set up, and get some ROMs on there so you can finally play your favorite emulation ROMs on the go. But first, I'm Ed and welcome to my Tuck Talk. To make this a little easier, I'm going to record it on my laptop and screen cap that, but everything's just going to be about the same. If there are any differences, I'll let you know. So first, you're going to want to go to mudeck.com. From here, just go ahead and click download at the top. Go to navigate to the Windows beta. And then just a little disclaimer that it might be flagged by your PC from the antivirus, but I promise you it's safe. So go ahead and click download beta and you'll notice that when it downloads it's not like a normal exe executable file or anything like that it's actually a command prompt because it's going to do it a little more in the back end style because it was imported from linux but go ahead and open that mudeck.command and you'll get that old style black box thing it's going to run through a couple uh like i said back end things it's going to ask you if you want to switch your DNS. You can. It might not be the first time you've ever seen this before, switching to 8888 for Google, but I'm just going to go ahead and say no because it's not that big of a file, so you shouldn't have to worry about like speed or anything like that. But then next, it's going to ask you if you have App Installer installed. So it's going to open Windows Store for you, and usually you'll have it installed. Oh, for me, I actually have to update it. So we're going to go ahead and update it. And once that is completed, we can go ahead and close the Microsoft Store because it actually tells you to anyway. Now it wants to install Winget. So we'll let that install. And then once it is installed, don't click reinstall. Go ahead and close it out. It's going to keep going through uh, some downloads here. Go ahead and set yes. And as I said before, this is fairly easy, super simple. It's just kind of intimidating when you get that old style command window prompts. All right. And most likely it should open MUDEC already, but sometimes it'll just put the exe in the downloads file where that command download went to. But it looks like in our case, it's gonna open it up. Yep. And like my favorite part about MUDEC is that now I don't have to go and chase my emulator friend 64 one my one for the playstation 2 one for gamecube it's just it grabs them all for you so it's just a nice all-in-one package that's what my favorite part about an emu deck is now that it kind of configured itself now time for the setup process so the only difference between easy mode and custom mode which we can i can show you both is that in easy mode, it's just gonna default to everything to kind of like the basic settings. And then when you go over to custom, this is where you can change the aspect ratios, the bezels where you wanna have them show the old style Game Boy color sides or something like that. That's where you wanna tinker in the custom mode. So I'm gonna show you custom mode just so you know the settings you can change. Important fact. So. To demonstrate, as on my Legion Go, how I have my ROM installed, I have an SD card in there. That's where I actually have the directory for this. So to demonstrate the same purposes, I've got just a little SD card here that I'm going to mimic as a micro SD I would put into my Legion Go or ROG Ally. We're going to make this, the directory, basically its own drive for all my ROMs. It's how I like to do it. You can do it your own way, have a separate folder on your C drive or whatever, but this is how I want to. So I'm gonna click the D drive because that's our SD card. And you'll see that now you get offered both the Legion Go and ROG Ally in the selection. And that's gonna be for controller compatibility. So basically it's gonna, it already has a configuration for both, like I said, the Legion Go and ROG Alias controllers just to make it that much easier. So that's going to be the only difference besides 
me not installing it directly on there right now because I already have it on my Legion Go. So I wanted to give you guys the fresh experience too. So that's gonna be the only difference besides me clicking Windows PC is that the controller configuration set up for you guys. And then here, like I said before, it's gonna grab all the emulators you want. Um, it's gonna default to the most popular ones, of course. Um, I know some people like Ry Ryujinx over Yuzu. I prefer Yuzu, so this is your opportunity to actually switch it if you actually have, want to. But for me, we're just gonna go ahead and continue. And then, once again, tools and configurations. This is uh, the defaults for them. Go ahead and continue again. And configuration of autosaves. So this is basically the autosave function built into RetroArch. So some systems can enable it, some systems can. It looks like the majority of them can have it enabled. For me, I'm more of a to save when I want and not much of an autosaver. You can also set up an account so you can do the retro arc achievements. So just like how games nowadays, you know, you do certain things, you unlock achievements. Well, now you can do that with your old style games too. But for me, we're just going to go ahead and skip that. And this is where I was talking about the bezels. You'll notice that on the sides, like you've got the old battery light. So if you want it on, default is on. Some people prefer not on. I kind of like the aesthetic of that old thing. So I'm going to keep it on. And then aspect ratio, because this can bother some people when you stretch it out or just some people do prefer original. I prefer original, rather not stretch it out and make the image look bad. You're already emulating something that's past its time. You can go down the whole rabbit hole of CRTVs, especially with these older generations. So this is definitely more preference options, no right or wrong answer. So like I said, I like original aspect. If you want, you can stretch it out, have less blocks, but once again, up to you. Another aspect ratio. So do you want default or real NAS resolution? Another default one, as you see, you can click them and it'll show you the difference. So some of them don't look bad, some of them do. So once again, up to you. And you'll see on the Nintendo 64 version, because there is that widescreen hack, some games can have it, some games cannot. So keep that in mind. So for me, I actually would recommend just keeping most of them an actual original aspect ratio. GameCube, same thing. So this one is more a visual aspect. So this is, as you can tell, kind of changes how it looks. So, you know, for me, I'm gonna keep it off. And then again, another CRT shader, that old style look. You can see it kind of changes how the colors look because back then how it displayed was completely different with the tubes. Again, another CRT shader. And then your front end. So this is how it's going to display all your games once you start adding them in. And I'll show you once I'll put a couple in there for you. My favorite is just emulation station because the way it looks and its simplicity. There's really no, once again, right or wrong answer. If you already have the Steam library, obviously you can integrate it to that as well. But once again, this is more of a preference thing. But for me, I prefer Emulation Station. And then this is just gonna be the, the default theme for it, for Pegasus. So you can skip that. And then it's gonna ask you for resolution. So this is probably gonna be more of what hardware you're running on. You know, both of these devices, you ain't gonna be pushing 4K, so don't even try. Most of them, you're probably only gonna go for that 1080p, but if you wanna test it, push it, be my guest. And then this is just a kind of checklist of what's gonna be applied. So once again, we picked our D drive, our SD card is gonna be where everything's gonna be installed, where all our ROMs are gonna be at, where it's gonna look for everything. So we can go ahead and finish. And now it's actually gonna get everything set up for us. And as for the emulators, it does take a minute as it is installing all of them, all those ones we picked at the beginning. So just bear with it. It's common for it to ask to want to install C++ visuals. So go ahead and say yes to it. 
a normal thing. So you might not get this message on the Legion Go or ROG Ally as they both, like I said, on that part where it showed both of them and I picked Windows PC, it's because obviously it's a little easier for screen capping and just showing, but this is why you get those options for these two for that controller configuration. So this part you'll probably get to ignore unless you're doing it on your PC, then it's just letting you know that it's using Steam input for controllers. So we, um, for me, I just prefer to use emu deck or yeah, emu, emulation station, sorry, instead of using St uh, Steam <laughs> ROM manager. So I'm gonna skip that. We're gonna go ahead and update everything. So once you get your emulators all updated, you're basically done with this part of MU Deck. Now you've got all your emulators installed and you can double check by going to all your app going to all your applications looking for MU Deck and then you'll notice that all the emulators will pop up underneath that now. So now let's get some games installed onto it. So once again, we go look at that SD card, our hard drive. We'll notice that it's got emulations folder in it. We've got a BIOS folder, a ROM folder, our saves, and all a bunch of other stuff. So for our ROMs, that's where we're gonna install or save our ROMs that we've uh, acquired in your own ways. So for me, I'm just gonna grab, we'll just do a couple random ones. Let me go to my server and grab some. So looking for PlayStation 1, and sometimes the naming obviously will make sense, like Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, GBA, Game Boy Color, GBC. But I wanna say some of them are kind of worded a little different, but for the most part, you're gonna kinda know what it is. Like for PlayStation, exactly. PlayStation 1 doesn't pop up as PlayStation 1, I believe. I think it's the PSX. If I'm not mistaken for PS1. Oh, I'm just gonna dump my ROM there, right into the folder. While that one's going, I'll grab, we'll just do a Game Boy one for the heck of it. All right, so once you got your ROMs installed, you can go navigate to emulation station. And then this is where they'll all pop up once it's read off your SD card hard drive, however you have it set up. I thought I was signed into Steam. And you'll notice that now it says Game Boy Advance because we put a Game Boy Advance game in there and a PlayStation game. So if we go to Game Boy Advance, we've got our copy of Pokemon Emerald. And you can get it to show said artwork. You just gotta go to Scraper. And I actually don't like Screen Scraper. I think the game SDB works better as a scraper. Uh, we're gonna do scrape systems. We'll do both of them real quick since it's only two. Go back and then hit quick start on it. And this is how it's gonna grab those images, descriptions, all that fun stuff. And you'll notice sometimes it doesn't grab the correct ones and you have to go back in there and edit them. But for the most part, at least it gives you something better than nothing. So now we can get back from this. And now it shows our description of the game. We can launch it. And we're playing Pokemon, just like that. So we're gonna go ahead and quit that game. And I'm gonna show you what happens when you don't have a BIOS for a game. So like I said, it's showing that the PlayStation game's there, but sadly, because I do not have the BIOS file for the PlayStation yet, it'll try to launch it, but sadly, it just won't. See, it just kinda bugs out right there because it does not have the correct authorization to launch that game. So like I said, quick Google search of said system plus BIOS with it, you'll most likely be able to find a file for that. But other than that, you're all set up and you can game on the go or on your desktop with the help of MU Deck and their awesome application. So hope you liked it, enjoy it, have fun.